Welcome back to the final episode about growing the good Christian girl. Guys, thank you so much for being on this journey with me and hearing my heart. And again, comment below anything you want to talk about, any topics like this to talk about in the future. And after my two-month maternity leave, I would love to come back and do some more videos about this for you guys. So today I want to talk about how my faith has both hurt and healed my mental health. And this video is sponsored by Faithful Counseling. They're an organization that connects you with counselors online. All the counselors are totally accredited and licensed and trained professionals, and they're also Christians. You can also, though, choose how involved you want your faith in your session. Anywhere from like, let's pray together every session to let's keep it strictly clinical, no talk about God unless I bring it up. You can choose, which I think is such a good quality to have in a counseling company. So, so they're sponsoring this video. All their sessions are online, so you can join up from anywhere in the world. And I have a link down below that can get you 10% off your first month with them. FYI, I do get a commission from them with people who sign up, but I'm not promoting them because of that commission. I'm promoting them because I really, really strongly believe in the power of counseling. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that that is true. So a few years ago, I was talking to my doctor about some symptoms I've been having, and I thought there was something wrong with my heart. Turns out I was struggling with a lot of anxiety and had never known it. It was funny because the people in my life close to me were like, you never knew you were struggling with anxiety. Like it is so obvious, it's run all over you. I'm like, why didn't you tell me then? Because I had no idea. Um, I was also struggling with depression, but I didn't know that either at the time. Um, so I started going to see a counselor here near me and he's this amazing person. Um, James actually goes to see him too now. And when I started going to see him, Originally, I started because of my anxiety and how that was affecting my marriage. But quickly, it turned into talking a lot about God in our sessions. I'd been really wrestling with my faith and what I believed, and different things just didn't seem to make sense to me anymore. They didn't seem to line up with what I understood of God in the Bible, and I didn't know what to do with that. I felt anxious all the time about it, like it was always weighing on my mind. And I also felt this constant pressure to be good enough for God, like this daughter he could be proud of. Um, so that even rolled into my everyday life with my quiet times with God. I was constantly worried that I wasn't spending enough time. And you know, we're, when I'm spending time with God, I'm like getting distracted and I feel like I have to reset the clock to make sure I have like a good 30 minutes of uninterrupted time focused on God. And it was just like all this pressure I was putting on myself that honestly God was not putting on me, but. I was and I just felt guilty all the time and when I'd have my quiet time I'd feel a sense of relief like I can check that off my list for today but then I'd feel guilty for feeling that sense of relief and you know Jesus said I came to give you rest my yoke is easy and my burden is light and this did not feel like rest or a light <laughs> yoke and burden this felt like so much pressure and so much work so I start wrestling with all these things through counseling and week after week I would leave and go by myself to a park and walk around and cry and cry and cry and just like feeling like all this tension bubbling out and this pressure coming off but also all this like fear of am I losing who I am like what is happening and I'll actually read you a journal entry I wrote around that time I said I feel like I'm running and it's wearing me out why am I so scared to be still and be with God what am I afraid of finding there what do I think I need to bring that I don't already have? What do I think I'm going to find there? Answer questions, ones I don't have answers for about God and doctrine and controversial issues in me. Why do I feel like I have to be anything or figure out anything when I come to him? The questions just make me anxious. They take over all the space I clear in my head. So why clear it to begin with? And that's why I'm running. I'm running from all my questions and maybe from the grief of questioning all I once was so sure of. Maybe from the loss of that version of me. God, I just don't know. You don't have to know. Just come and rest, child. Lay your burdens here. And for a while, I couldn't get away from that tension and turmoil and grief. But you know, as I continued through counseling and my counselor would just ask these questions like, why do you need to know that? What is that driving force in you that says, I can't rest until I have it all figured out? And as I slowly started accepting that, like, number one, I don't have to have all the answers. Number two, not everybody has to agree with me because I'd get so defensive and feel like I just want them to understand where I'm coming from. Like even YouTube comments at the time, it was like, I just, I really want them to understand where I'm coming from and my heart in this. And I want to explain it to them and defend myself. My counselor was like, why? Why does everyone need to agree with you? And a lot of it came down to this idea that I had never felt fully seen for who I was. It was almost like throughout my life growing up, there hadn't been enough 
mirroring coming into my life. I feel like I was kind of isolated in a sense, especially as a teenager. There wasn't enough of that healthy mirroring coming in for me to see who I was and to feel seen. And so I wanted people to see me and I wanted them to really see who I was and that just wasn't gonna happen with strangers on the internet. Another thing I started accepting number three was just accepting where I was on my journey, that I didn't have to be somewhere else. I could be right where I was, as messy as it was, and God was with me and he loved me there. And number four, that maybe it was healthy for me to run from all these shoulds I've created, all this pressure I put on myself, that maybe I did need to run from that. I started having all these dreams about running from something. My counselor said, I wonder if it's you running from the shoulds you've created. And it made so much sense to me just to say, I've put all this pressure and rules on myself that are not from God. They are from me and sometimes church culture. And honestly, there came a time when I just didn't have a quiet time every day. And I know that's super controversial in Christian circles. It wasn't like I didn't spend any time with God. I would just talk to him throughout the day as I was painting the walls or as I was running after my child. It could be just little prayers throughout the day, but just that staying connected rather than doing it a certain way. I actually have a whole video all about that journey for me in my quiet time that I've linked down below. So I think like initially I went to counseling because this very legalistic view of God, this very black and white view was too much weight on my shoulders to live under. It just eventually, at first I was like, I can carry this, you know, when you're younger, this is working. I can stand up to this. I can do it all. And then things in life happen and you're like, I am too weak to carry this. I have come to the end of my own strength. And I start just asking all these questions. And honestly, it was like this really hard season of all those questions, but then starting to come out the other side, it was like weights falling off my shoulders. It was literally amazing. What a night and day difference I saw in myself and my husband and family saw in me, even with my anxiety. And I think starting to see my face in the way I've talked about during this series, as giving myself permission to ask questions, as looking for the fruit of things. Jesus said, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. And so using that as a litmus test on things I don't understand to say, what's the fruit I see? Should I start looking and into this more? Should I start asking questions about this? But also saying, I don't have to know all the answers. And God wants a relationship with me. That doesn't mean I have to do an hour long devotions routine every morning to have a relationship with God. It doesn't mean I even have to have a devotions every day. I have to recognize like I can still be in communication with God through my day and it just lightens the load like all those burdens come off again looking at the fruit of it Jesus said my yoke is easy my burden is light and taking this new mindset on has brought a yoke that is easy and a burden that is light and it's all in relationship with a God who cares a few months ago I was talking with my counselor for our last scheduled appointment I'd seen him regularly for four years and we were talking and he said, I think we're ready to just do this on an ad, on an as needed basis. And I was like, wow, I'm graduating. <laughs> and he's like, what do you think has made the most difference in your life? Like in your anxiety and the freedom that you found. And I was like, honestly, just seeing God differently and not having all these perfectionistic expectations of myself and my relationship with God, but just being on the journey with him that has made all the difference. That is what has healed my soul. And so this Outgrowing the Good Christian Girl series is just a reflection of what has healed my soul. And I hope that it can spur you on in your own healing, in your own freedom, to walk with God with joy and with freedom and with peace and not having to know everything, but trusting that God's at work in your life and in the lives of people who think differently than you do. So thank you ladies and brave gentlemen for joining me on this journey. Again, check out Faithful Counseling, link down below. And let me know in the comments any topics you want to talk about in this Outgrowing the Good Christian Girl series. And when I get back from maternity break, I'm hoping to film some more of these for you. Love you all and see you later this spring. Bye.